Today I want to show you how you can put large language models within SQL so that you can call them directly from your DB. Now this is uh, prompted by a tweet that I saw earlier today which is Jason, from Jason Matson. Um, he is the dev advocate at uh, Mother Duck which is a data warehouse cloud provider and uh, it has this tweet where they've basically added the ability within Mother Duck to have a function called prompt which then is able to call out to a large language model. So we've got here an example that he's given, which uh, gives a table that they have, um, and it goes off, which includes some text, which is a bunch of reviews and timestamp, and it goes off and for every um, piece of text within those reviews, it says summarize the review in five words, and it calls out to a prompt. So in, behind the scenes, that is going off to open AI um, and making a call. So we get a single call for each one of these rows. And I looked at that and thought, oh, that's really interesting. Uh, you know, it's linked out to a blog post here, it goes into some further detail. So you can see that actually how the prompt is specified and uh, how it works. So this exists within Mother Duck, as I said before, this uh, kind of cloud provider. My first instinct to this was, this is great, but I want to run it locally. How can I do that? Uh, can I do something like that locally? Um, you can see that there's a couple of different examples here. So they also have the ability to pass in the prompt, uh, sorry, the model that they're using. So they also, within the article, talk about how they can provide structured data um, as through the use of the structured data calls to um, OpenAI to return structured data to cells and then use those that structured data as part of a query. So you can see that they pull back. Um, in this case, it is topic sentiment and technologies that they are using. Um, and then they later on use that as part of a, they use that for the columns that they are returning for the um, table that they want. So like I said, I wanted to be able to use this locally or, um, on my own um, database. And I thought, what's the easiest way to do this? What's the, what's the most simple way to prop, uh, look at this? So I went out to Claude and asked it if it was possible to do within SQLite. And it turns out it is with something called APSW. So APSW is another Python SQL Lite wrapper, I believe is the name. Um, and it gives us an interface to SQLite. Now, while Claude did originally prompt me very badly with um, how to go about this, it explained that I would use a decorator that didn't exist. And it also explained um, how I would use calls to OpenAI, which were the wrong type of calls. It did put me on the right path. And so here I've got an example where I have basically defined this function prompt. This prompt is a function that I'm going to add as a scalar function, something called scalar function, to um, SQLite. So you can see a little bit later, I call out to um, APSW, and I say I want to create an in-memory database, add a scalar function, which includes this prompt. And all we're doing is taking the argument to prompt that is uh, text, uh, we take this first argument here and we pass it into um, our call to open AI. So you can see here we've got two inserts that I've done. In fact, actually, that one's not even closed. Let's close that. So we've got two inserts there. Um, and we call select prompt, um, summarize my text. And you see in the text in there, we've got an SQL Lite is a C language library and some details of Python as an interpret high level language library. So if we go ahead and run that, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all of them. So fetch all rather than fetch one. And we'll see how that goes. And I'm running UV, so I've already got the packages installed for hit this, including OpenAI and APSW. So we just do UV run, and this is called example one this far. So we can see that we get SQLite is a compact and efficient C library that provides a reliable and full-featured SQLite SQL database language 
Python is a high-level interpreted generalized purpose program language by Guido van Rossum. Now, you can see that those summaries are slightly different to what we have in the text there. Um, I could just say, instead of that prompt, I could, in fact, say which language, which programming language are we talking about? And if we were to run that, program language mentioned in the text is C. SQL is a library written in the C program language. Program language mentioned in the text is Python. So you can see that we're making a call out to the LLM, and it's working. Um, and I thought, oh, this is this is you know this is really cool. Can we take it a step further? Can we get that structured um, response that we were also seeing? that uh, Mother Duck was giving an example. Um, so as part of a, another example here, I have that structured response. So here, slightly more complicated, we aren't just returning a text string, we are returning a, a structured response. And SQLite, by default, can't handle that. So we can't do as Mother Duck has done and um, use that somewhere else. Um, we as like we can't use the individual fields that are coming back as that. So what we end up having to do um, is return a pydantic model um, that is serialized as JSON. So we've got an instance of pydantic model, in fact, that is serialized as JSON. So if you take a look at this, we've got the same prompt call. So if we go down to that first. You can see here that, um, in fact, actually, let's go to the call, which you can understand what's going on there. So here we've got the call to um, our prompt function. So we've got select title time prompt. I should say this is coming for a database that includes the top 10 articles from Hacker News from today. So I've already populated that, and that has um, um, details including a summary written in Markdown of the website. So you can see here we're prompting it, extract the data from the article. So it assumes that each of those things that are in, top, in the top hack of news is an article. And we give it a struct and we give it a struct description. And these basically form the basis of what we're going to use as a pydantic model that we put up to OpenAI. So, that is passed to our function as a second argument. So we can see here, we've got our prompt function again. We have a second argument, and we take from that a the struct and the struct description. We create a pydantic model from that, and that is using this function above here. It basically tallies up the struct and the struct description from the prompt and uses the create model that comes from pydantic in order to create that model that we have to pass up to OpenAI. Once we do that, um, we're also allowing the ability to call it as we were originally. So we have these if statements. So if we're using response portal, we use the new approach. If we're not, then we just carry on as we were before. And what this will do is, and we also have like, if we look at this, we are defining the types. We don't necessarily need to do that because actually what we return ends up getting serialized to JSON so we can um, display it in SQLite anyway. I'm using it as an example because it's it marries with what the Mother Duck um, article is talking about. And so this pydantic types map to um, actual types that are in that we can use in Pydantic. So rather than SQL types, we're mapping to Python, uh, Python types. So you can see here we are extracting the topic, sentiment, and technologies used. Um, and we're pulling out the top five. I've only limited, I've limited to five because I don't necessarily need to go off and get all 10 of them. I wanted to test <laughs> that it was working before I went any further. So if we clear that down and run that, so, and run example two. And it's gonna take a little while because it's doing five calls there and 
bringing structured data back for all of them. So what we've got here is each of the individual rows. We've got the original data that was in there before. So the um, the date and the title of the article. I haven't actually got the link to the article. I could include that. Um, but you can see we're getting structured data here. So we can see that the first thing it's found is hacker typer. Um, it is found that technology is using it is web design, web development, SEO, JavaScript, HTML, similar for the other ones, Notebook LLM. Notebook LM launches a feature to customize and guide over audio overviews. You can see that sentiment is five. Technologies, audio overviews, Google Workspace, blah, 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 blah. Now, this kind of seems fairly trivial. Yes, okay, cool. We are calling out to a LM from SQL. I kind of think that it's quite interesting because actually, if we're able to do this, you can imagine that we would have a web interface on top of this, potentially and that we enable users who might not be able to necessarily use Python, say, um, to use SQL, something that they're familiar with, to be able to make these calls to LLM. Maybe not for the structured output, because it's a little bit more complex and it might need a bit of guidance, but certainly for that original prompt example that I was giving, it makes it a lot simpler for them to be able to get data in their um, C CSV or SK Excel or whatever they're using. So yeah, very simple example of how you can use scalar functions with SQLite to kind of get some of that same behavior that I saw in that original article. Fairly simple to do. Um, I do have these examples in a GitHub repo, which I'll link in the video description below. But yeah, I hope you found the video interesting and I will speak to you soon in another video. All right, bye for now, bye.